Well, hello and welcome to my flower studio. My name's Georgie Newbury. I'm a flower farmer and florist based here in sunny Somerset between fashionable Bruton and up and coming with Canton. Uh, and today I'm going to make a, give you a demo of a, just some spring flower inspiration. It's a simple arrangement. You can make it without very many complicated bits of kit. And I hope it'll inspire you to get out into your gardens this weekend with a pair of scissors and snip what you can. We are the 22nd, 23rd of March. So the equinox, spring is, you can literally smell the sap rising. So get outside, snip what you can, and make what I call a 30 stem challenge. Um, I've got some bits and pieces here. I will admit, I find it very hard to stop at 30. So I have a few more than 30, but I have a hashtag, 30 stem challenge, and if you share your results on my, on your Instagram, if you're on Instagram, tag 30 stem challenge and tag me, common farm flowers, I might see them and share a few of the best on my stories. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. If any of the tips and tricks are useful along the way, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join my club. 250 so far members and we're having a lovely time talking about flower growing, flower farming, small businesses, social media, floristry and more. Uh, so join me there. The link for coffee buying and club membership is in the blurb to all my clips. Equally, if you're interested in any of my workshops or demos, the links to those are in my clips too. Right, let's get on. Let's be inspiring. So I haven't got very complicated kit here. I have a simple vase. If you're looking for vases, try and find them with heavy bottoms because then they won't fall over. This is a really nice uh, vase that somebody was getting rid of once and um, hello Sue <laughs> and she was having a clear out and she gave it me and actually it's a really fantastic vase it's relatively small it's low enough that you can see over it if you're going to make a table center with it the only thing is sometimes it is almost it is wider than it is tall which means that when you're putting material in, unless it's tied, you risk things trying to fall out. So I'm going to add a flower frog. And this one I found at a second, a second hand shop one, one day. Um, I think flower frogs are so fashionable now that uh, I'm sure people are manufacturing them again and you can find them online. So do look up flower frogs and see what you can find. This is not a pinwheel frog. This is a base of glass, and I run it through the dishwasher from time to time to keep it clean. Um, and it just has holes in it, which I can use just to, to secure the stems. And again, like the bars, it is heavy bottomed, so it's not gonna pull itself out of the way. So I'm just gonna pop that, glug, 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 in, into my vase. And the nice thing about it is because it's glass, it sort of disappears into the vase. I love glass vases. This is going to number one Bruton, which is a small boutique hotel um, in fashionable Bruton for the drawing room. And so I need to make something which is, which is the right proportion and size for the space. Um, and this vase is the kind of vase that you could have in a sitting room. You know, they call it a drawing room because they're very grand. Um, and I think a bit of grandeur, we can all have a drawing room. Let's all call our sitting rooms drawing rooms and withdraw to them from time to time. My other piece of, of invaluable kit are my Niwaki snips. Niwaki are based near Shaftesbury, which is very close to me. And um, if you're cutting a lot of flowers, I would use snips because they will prevent you getting RSI. So nicely balanced snips are worth it. Um, and we use Niwaki. So what am I going to do first? Well, I always, for those of you who've watched my clips before, I always start by greening up and I'm using Grisolinia, uh, which is a lovely shrub. I'm told by one of you, native to New Zealand. Oops, I need a bucket for my compost. Hold on. The compost bucket. 
luggage. Kopos! Kopos! There we are. Um, the pens on the floor. I don't know. Um, so, uh, I'm going to use Grisolinia, which somebody, one of you, I think, told me is a native New Zealand, uh, but goes very well in the UK. It is often found as a sort of suburban hedge. And a suburban hedge, if you don't clip it too closely, can become very nice cutting material. And I'm just popping these stems in, and I don't really care how they fall, because I've got quite a lot more material to go in. But they too, like the frog, are providing me with a little bit of a base. And you can see I'm snipping each stem as I go because it just keeps the cellulose drinking cells open. And I'm, this is called, I call this greening up. So I'm greening up my arrangement by pretty much blobbing in. This is not fancy pants work. A bit of greenery, there we go. A green base. And next I've got the first of my tulips. Now these are uh, exotic emperor and they are in fact volunteers from last year. And you can see from these why People plant tulips fresh every year. These are tiny headed. So they're beautiful white tulips with a really amazing, when they open, they're enormous. But these are about a third or less, a quarter of the size of the tulip heads I had last year. They're earlier because they've been in the ground all year. Um, most of them I dug up, but obviously I missed a few and I'm not going to miss them again. You can see that they've got the bulb on the bottom. That's because I pulled them right out of the ground. I don't really want them sitting there for another year. Um, so I'm snipping the bulb off and I'm just going to pop them into my arrangement. Now I'm gonna keep as much of the greenery as I can because it's interesting and it gives me more structure in an arrangement which I'm basically putting buds in. There's not going to be much colour in this until everything comes out, which they will all come out in the warmth of the drawing room at number one Bruton, um, but not, they're not out yet. This is for my client. If I've got a bashed leaf, I'll pull it off. Um, you know, this needs to last a week in a warm room, centrally heated, uh, so I'm giving them in tight bud and they will last a week. Pop them in like that. And I've cut nine. I picked up nine because I quite like doing everything in odd numbers. If you do everything in odd numbers, you'll never end up with a square or a rectangle or a straight line. It's worth doing like that. So there we are. So go and see, just because something's not in full flower, have a look around your garden and see what you've got. You might find that you've got lovely buds and these will grow in the vase. So by the time I pick up this arrangement in a week from the hotel, these will have grown tall and been amazing. So you can see I've made a really good, the tulips have not only um, provided interest and that the leaves proportionally are exotically large compared to the grisolinia. And so I can now add a bit more twiggery pokery. And then I'm going to put my, my daffs in last because the twiggery pokery the grisolinia, the tulips, are providing a good nest for the daffs, which are, there's practically nothing there yet. Because this is all from my garden. 
So what have we got for Twiggery Pokery? We've got a little bit of my beloved Physocarpus Darts Gold. Barely in leaf. So I'm going to snip up the stems of these, keep the drinking cells open. And any material which is going to be under the water line, I'll strip. But this is, so the, sil the leaves of the red so far are quite silvery grey, and this is very zingy yellow, so it's a really nice contrast. It's very springy. And this arrangement is going on a small round table next to the fire. But it'll be looked down upon. It's worth thinking about when you're making floristry where something's going to go. And it'll be looked down upon, not in a bad way. Um, snip out any bits that are not great. It'll be looked down upon. And so I need to make sure that there are no gaps in the middle, that the whole thing is sort of very full and generous. So there we've got my physocarpus, and then I did ask, very important, this is black elder, but it's the very, very splayed fingered variety. Please don't ask me what it's called. My brain is tired, it's been a long week, but the black color of the leaves as they come out will be astonishing. And you can see the leaves grow in pairs up the stem, so I could cut it off at each pair of leaves, like this. Make sure you cut up the stem so that the cellulose drinking cells stay open. And again, very good dramatic contrast, this black leaf. And because it's a very tight bud, it will slowly come out in the warmth of that, uh, of that hotel drawing room it won't flop if you cut your elder later in the season it might be a bit floppy so i cut it now and use it now having asked i did ask the plant whether it would mind i'm on the i'm on the camera my love that's my husband for Brittany. yes i'm filming i'm filming Hang on, just give me a sec. I've got to turn you off for a sec. Right. Lunch is ready, so I've got to hurry up. Anyway, um, so I'm going to pop all these black elder in. If anybody can remember what the... The very... F oh, I'll think of it. When it's got no, I'll think of it and I'll put it in the nose. When the leaf is very serrated, that's what we've got here. Very serrated leaves and the contrast of the dark red leaf with the silver of the tulips and the yellow of the physocarpus is very good. It's going to be, I mean, I could stop at any stage because I've got quite a nice, this is already a nice mix. And it's going to come out really beautifully. So there we have. There we are. And I've got a bit, my final twiggery pokery, which I'm going to put in first, is my curly whirly willow. Look at that. It's full of movement, just coming out. Little tiny, little tiny catkins. Great colour. All together, extremely useful. If you put this in a vase, it will root eventually, and then you can plant the trees. And I'm not particularly cutting up these stems because they're not especially woody. I cut them just now, so they've been in water since I cut them. They don't need, they don't need refreshing those cuts. Uh, 
I'm bearing in mind where this is going to go. And I don't want them hanging too far forward because they'll, the room is, it, I don't want them to burst into the room. So I'm allowing them to sort of hang down the sides of this arrangement a bit. Right, there we have the twiggery pokery in. And now I've got very in bud, Narcissi and daffodils, look, no colour there at all. So this will be all surprises when they come out for my lovely client. It is true that Narcissi and daffodils are poisonous. However, I have not experienced ever in all my years of florist leaf putting, mixing narcs, we call them narcs here, narcs and daffs in a mixed arrangement. I have never ever found that they will kill everything else. And sometimes people are very, very concerned. So in my experience, Narcissi and daffs have never ever killed the rest of the arrangement. So I wouldn't worry too much about popping them in. So I'm putting them quite deep inside the arrangement so that when they come out, they'll be, it'll be a good surprise. When I'm done, I'll show you. It's always fun. This is very uh, good practice for me doing back to front demonstrations. <laughs> Right, uh, this is too boring. It's going to take me a while to pop them all in. So I'll put them all in and then I'll show you what I've done. Right, there we are. We're all done. To be fair, it's more like 50 stems than 30. Um, but go and have a fun time around your garden this weekend. See if you can cut 30 stems of interest. It doesn't have to be in full flower. Think about how... The emerging leaves work with, how the twigs work with each other. Think about, you're not looking for, I don't think floristry is really about flowers. Floristry is about structure and shape and uh, arabesque, balletic leaning. And it doesn't have to be in full flower to make that interesting mix. It's about colour. I love the zingy green of the grisolinia and the physocarpus, this amazing purple of the um, the black elder, uh, Sambucus nigra, and I want to say dissectum or something like that. Um, it'll come to me anyway. <laughs> but with the with the, the hand leaves that are serrated edge leaves, um, the tulips when they come out will be white and green. The narcissi, I don't grow sort of madly bright yellow narcs, so um, they will all be pale. Uh, but I can see that, you know, this one has got a sort of a pale peachy coloured trumpet. Um, and there are lots of different kinds in here. There's talia, there are double little, there are narcissi, there are daffodils. So I cut just anything that had enough, the buds were fattening up enough that I think they're going to pounce, they're going to pop. And that's a really, I think, really simple and attractive little mix. I'll give you a close-up look. There, it's easier close-up. You see then the colour, the, the really amazing purple of this uh, elder and how it contrasts so well with the, the zingy yellow of the physocarpus. And then look at all these fat buds ready to pop. The tulips looking amazing they're so um they're, they're sort of like alien species and all the buds of the daffs and the narcissi so that's going to provide interest for my client for at least a week in its really simple glass vase and i've just got that frog can you see the flower frog in the bottom there which is just giving a little bit of um, holding all the stems in the in place, but not taking away from the fact that it's glass. I like the glass because it means that the flowers look light. Right. Thank you very much for joining in. I hope you um, have enjoyed it and I hope you're inspired to have a go yourself. 
Uh, I'm going to go and deliver this and my lunch can wait. Bye.